A typical definition of a vector is stated as follows. A vector is a physical quantity that has direction and magnitude. This statement is kind of abstract and can be confusing for many students. In reality though, the concept of vector is very easy and we use this concept in our everyday life. Let me give an example. Say we want to give directions to go to Angel Stadium in Anaheim from Cal Poly Pomona. You could say, take Highway 10 and 57. But this information is not enough because Highway 10 runs from east to west and we have to specify which way to go, east or west. Similarly, 57 runs north-south and we have to specify which way to go, up north or south. So the better way to give the direction will be take 10 east and then take 57 south. However, if you think about it, this information is also incomplete. You can take 10 east, but 10 goes all the way from Santa Monica, California, all the way to Jacksonville, Florida, covering almost 4,000 kilometers. We don't want to go that far on 10 east to take 57 south. So when do we take the exit for 57 South? A better way to specify the direction would be take 10 East and drive 2 kilometers. Then take 57 South and drive 35 kilometers and you will reach Angel Stadium. If you look at these statements closely, you will see we are stating two pieces of information for each segment. First, 10 East tells you which way to go. So this gives the direction. Then 2 km says how far to go, so this gives the magnitude. We can call this quantity as vector because it has a direction and a magnitude. So vector is not some difficult concept. It's a simple concept that we use in our everyday life when we give directions or even when we drive our car. We earlier discussed about forces. And force is also a quantity that has direction and magnitude. So force is also a vector. Examples of vectors are force, position, velocity, and acceleration. Although these are different physical concepts, we call them vectors which make our life easier. Now let's see how we can represent a vector. We can represent vectors by drawing them to scale. Drawing vectors is very useful conceptually. When a vector is represented graphically, its magnitude is represented by the length of an arrow and its direction is represented by the direction of the arrow. To define the direction, we normally show the angle the tail of the vector makes with the horizontal. Now that we have a better understanding of vectors, we are now ready to perform vector operations such as vector addition. Vector addition can be done using graphical and analytical methods. We will do that in our next video.